cataractcoach.com, IOL calculation case series, lesson number four, prior radial keratotomy or RK. Now back before LASIK, radial keratotomy was a common technique used for keratorefractive surgery, typically for myopic eyes to make radial cuts in the cornea in order to flatten the central cornea, lowering the corneal power. So if you look at this left eye and go down here at the reflection of the rings for the topographer, you can see a lot of those radial cuts here and here. And there are actually 22 radial cuts in this eye. And if you look at the current refraction, it's a little bit of hyperopia, some astigmatism. And then look at the K values here. If you look at the axial mapping here, that central cornea is really flat. K value is somewhere in the 36 diopter range there. So really quite low. Now, there are some additional higher order aberrations that you see in these eyes because of the changes from the radial keratotomy. So we're not gonna be able to address all of those, obviously. So let's move on to the next examination here. So still sticking with just the left eye, the left eye here now, here is a tomography. So looking at the left eye tomography, pardon me there, here we go. Again, the curvature very flat here, 35 diopters even centrally, 34, 9, 33, 8. Total corneal power rate trace, again, about the 34.6 range. There's the effect on the posterior elevation, and here's the thickness. So obviously the pachymetry is normal, because remember, RK is not taking away corneal thickness, it's just changing corneal curvature. And then you can see here, this gives a ray trace average mean power in the center of about 35.79. So another good data point. Let's look at this one. This is an OCT image of the cornea for that same left eye. And what you see here, interestingly, is of course, pachymetry we already know it's normal. We didn't change the thickness of the cornea, but the curvature did change. The net power is 35.59 with an anterior power of 40 and a posterior 4.9. So that minus 4.9 diopter on the posterior surface is different, right? Remember in LASIK, you're only changing the anterior curvature. And the posterior curvature typically is about minus six diopters. Here it's less, because RK changes anterior and posterior curvature. So let's look at some biometry here. Looking at that left eye, so the patient had an axon of about 26 millimeters, so fairly myopic, maybe in the minus six, seven, eight, nine range, somewhere in this area. Again, very consistent with the pachymetry. K's again are showing very, very flat. Everything else looks pretty normal. Good AC depth, and then also big white to white, so obviously a myopic eye here. And the calculations now, let's look at this. 22 cut RK in this left eye. So let's see what the formulas come up with. Now, what do we know by looking at these? First, none of them are gonna be spot on. With a really flat K, what's, what do we avoid? Don't look at the SRKT, that's gonna be the most often. Look as it is, 22 drops. If you put that in, I promise you the patient will end up hyperopic. Now, looking at here, the Hagus takes into account the actual measured anterior chamber depth, and it's least reliant on the K value to calculate out what the effective lens position is gonna be. So it does that primarily based on the AC depth measurement. And so that comes up 24 and a half. Don't use Barrett. Graham, you're a good guy, but you can't be used here. And certainly don't use that either. So of all these, the only one that's probably in the ballpark is gonna be Hagus here. But even then we cross it out. You can go to the online ASCRS calculator for the same patient, left eye, goal of Plano. Put in all the data you have, and here's what we end up with. We end up with, for our left eye Plano result, of the data that we inputted, we can see using the average central power, we choosing a 25 dot lens for Plano, just based on the OWL master lens star data, maybe 24 and a half, which we saw there earlier with that Hagus. OCT based 25 doppers, Barrett True K, eh, I worry about that. So average is here. What would I choose here? Well, I know RK is the gift that keeps on giving, meaning if you make the patient absolutely Plano today, in a few years, the patient will be a little hyperopic, plus a half. So I'd rather the patient end up a little on the minus side, if anything. So of these, I wouldn't necessarily use the average, which would be 24 and a half, but I'd probably put a 25 dot per lens in this eye. 
And that's what we're going to do. Surgery scheduled coming up soon. I'll let you know how it goes. But in this case, yeah, 25 diopters is my goal, uh, Iowa Power, for this patient to achieve a plano post-op result. So RK, not easy stuff. You got to learn all these techniques and these measurements and these calculations in order to give your patients the best outcome. Thanks for watching.